Last year, Derek Dunlap of Dallas was headed home after picking up his nine year old son and a family member from Denison. When Dunlap was pulled over by Denison police officer Tyler Buchanan in the plaintiff's original complaint, Buchanan pulled him over due to an alleged dim license plate light. <laughs> I'm not going to kill him. Get back. This is a body cam footage of Tyler Buchanan arresting Derek Dunlap in May of 2023. He used the dim light as an excuse uh, to really stop Derek for what he wanted to, and uh, that was he was profiling him. According to their complaint, Buchanan ordered Dunlap to step out of his vehicle and started to ask him if he had any drugs or guns in his vehicle. Derek thought that that was very strange, uh, that this officer would just jump in and just start asking him those, those type of questions. The officer allegedly made comments that he was leaving a high-risk drug area. They say Buchanan began to reach into Dunlap's pocket to search him for drugs or guns and grab Dunlap by the arms and then his neck, telling him not to swallow anything. Attorney Dara Washington says Dunlap had Tic Tac candies in his hands and mouth, which he was eating prior to being pulled over. The body cam footage begins when Buchanan releases his canine from the car. You can see that Derek is not actively resisting this guy. You're doing in front of my son. You can hear Dunlap's son screaming that he eats Tic Tacs. In fact, he accused Derek of swallowing the plastic bag, which is just totally ludicrous. Dunlap was taken to TMC to treat his about 50 bite and scratch wounds. While he was there, he consented to an x-ray to prove he did not swallow any drugs. Dunlap was arrested, however, for evading arrest and abandonment and or endangerment of a child. According to Washington, the officer has not been reprimanded. But when you see something like that happen and absolutely nothing happens to the officer, those are the type of incidents that make it very difficult to have any trust when it comes to dealing with police officers. A spokesperson for the Denison Police Department told me they are unable to comment on the situation. A jury trial has been set for August 20th. We will continue to follow this case. In studio, Hannah Gonzalez, News 12. Good morning and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m., bright and early right here at home on the range. And you wanted some bad apples for breakfast? Well, we got them anyways. Okay, this one must be serious, this bad apple, because the Attorney General announces the arrest and charges filed against a former Solano State Prison correction officer. The AG himself announces it. California Attorney General Rob Bonta today announced the arrest and felony charges against a former Solano State Prison Correction Officer. Following grand jury proceedings, the suspect has been indicted on four felony charges including conspiracy to smuggle weapons and other contraband into a penal institution, <laughs> attempting to bring a deadly weapon into a penal institution, and receiving bribes. Whoa! Regardless of occupation or position, our office is committed to holding those who break the law accountable, said Attorney General Rob Bonta. No one is above the law. I'm thankful to our state and federal law enforcement partners for their work on this case. Uh oh California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation strongly condemns any peace officer who... Uh, okay, said Secretary Jeff McComb, who oversees the state's prison system. Let's let this serve as a reminder that we will say, uh, we don't care what you say, dude. These things happen every day. Bad apples are just what you guys breed. Let's find out more about what this goofball is all about. Look at this. We're grateful for our strong collaborator. We don't care. Okay, here we go. The, the suspect, a resident of Rancho Cordova, served as a correctional officer at Solano State Prison between February 2020 and September 2021. During this time, he allegedly accepted thousands of dollars in cash payments to bring a wide range of contraband into the prison. The contraband allegedly ranged from cell phones, tobacco, alcohol, and deadly weapons. <laughs> this guy. He's accused of coordinating the types of contraband, delivery details, and his fees through an inmate and out-of-custody accomplice. Man, that guy's smart. <laughs> the suspect was arrested by California Department of Justice Division of Law Enforcement Bureau of Investigation and booked into Sacramento County Jail. The case was investigated by the Federal Bureau of Investigation and California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. It's important to note that a criminal indictment contains ah, blah, blah, blah. He's not guilty until he's proven guilty. All right. Looks bad for that guy. You got the AG announcing that you're a bad apple. All right. 
of an L.A. County Sheriff's deputy is finding himself on the wrong side of the law, accused of smuggling drugs into L.A. County jail complex in Castaic. Fox 11's Gina Silva working this story. She's live with a detail that makes this case even more shocking, Gina. Absolutely, Alex. This deputy worked for a special investigative unit within the jails, and that unit is in charge of stopping exactly what he's accused of. All right, it's open. Inside L.A. County Jail at the North County Correctional Facility in Castaic, a deputy was arrested for allegedly smuggling drugs to inmates. Uh, he was currently being watched by yet other deputies to which they... Um, reported the, the wrongdoing. Soren Prime, a former LASD deputy who runs the Prime Initiative dedicated to safeguarding the hardworking men and women of law enforcement and exposing the corrupt ones, says the deputy arrested worked for the anti-gang unit known as Operation Safe Jails, OSJ. OSJ is a um, investigative unit. It stands for Operation Safe Jail, which partners up with Operation Safe Streets. Operation Safe Streets is the same investigative unit that investigates um, drug issues, uh, drug trafficking, uh, gang movement, gang issues, um, and other potential wrongdoings that are plaguing, <laughs> plaguing the streets and the jails as well. Inmate records show that the 39-year-old deputy identified as Michael Meisner was arrested on April 30th and booked on felony charges. <laughs> The LASD says the department's Internal Criminal Investigation Bureau is investigating the allegations. The LASD issued a statement that says in part, the employee is relieved of duty pending the outcome of the case. This is an ongoing investigation. Once the case is completed, it will be presented to the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. It is very ironic, but at the same side of that coin, in speaking with the deputies who are currently working for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department, they stated that it's actually pretty common that stuff like this happens. But why would a deputy do this, knowing they could lose it all and face prison? Well, this could be done not only for leverage, but also for personal gain and finances. You know, you there's obvious a lot of money in the drug world. And for the most part, for some people, that is just way too tempting. So sources tell us the OSJ investigative unit has a lot of power within the jail system. And they tell us this is not the first time something like this has allegedly. You occurred. may remember we did a little story on this DEA agent who ran down this woman as he was racing through a neighborhood. And she was on a bicycle and he ran a stop sign and just mowed her over and killed her. And uh, he would have gotten away with it had it not been for the ring doorbell cameras and whatnot. And so, thusly, now he is attempting, his lawyers are attempting to move the trial into federal court so that he can seek qualified immunity. Five, a DEA agent accused of killing a cyclist in Salem while on duty had his case presented before a federal appeals court today in Seattle. Now, at the center of today's hearing was whether the agent can claim immunity from state prosecution because he was on duty, uh, an on-duty federal agent. So it's state versus federal here. Fox 12 investigative reporter Ezra Kaplan has been following the case and brings us the story now. Ezra? Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, this morning, each side was allowed about 10 minutes to argue their case in front of the appellate judges. The debate centers around a complex legal theory anchored in the idea that federal law supersedes state law. But at the heart of this case is the tragic death of a mother, a wife, and a pillar of the Salem community. On March 28, 2023, Margaine Allen was riding her bike home from work in Southeast Salem. Video from that day shows a black pickup truck running a stop sign moments before striking and killing the cyclist. Behind the wheel was DEA Special Agent Samuel Landis, who, according to court documents, was conducting surveillance of a suspected fentanyl dealer. Landis had fallen behind the rest of the surveillance team and was trying to catch up when he allegedly struck Allen on her bicycle. The testimony at, at the grand jury was that there was no urgency and that there was no hot pursuit. After months of delay, Landis was charged with criminally negligent homicide on September 6th in Marion County Circuit Court. 
But Landis's lawyers asked to have the case moved to a federal court so that they could use a defense of federal immunity. And so the immunity doctrine says if the person is acting as a federal agent, then they are immune from state prosecution. U.S. District Judge Michael McShane granted that request in December of last year, moving the case to the district court in Eugene. The Oregon Attorney General's Office appealed that decision and today argued in front of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals that the case should stay in state court. So normally you actually wouldn't be able to, to get um, an appeal heard before you've resolved the entire case. But this is a special circumstance because if the case should not be in federal court, then waiting until it's been heard is, is a colossal waste of resources and time. Uh, and so forth. An attorney for the state of Oregon argued to the appellate judges that running the stop sign wasn't necessary for Landis to do his job as a DEA agent. You talk about and focus on urgency with legitimate justification, but are you almost suggesting that there needs to be a necessity for him to have run the light or I mean run the stop sign? Yes, yes, definitely. When a federal officer violates state traffic law, their conduct will only be necessary in that circumstance when there is some urgency or emergency that requires them to do so. Landis's lawyers countered that running the stop sign was perceived as necessary at the time, regardless of how it seems now. Everybody can say right now that wasn't, that wasn't the right decision. We know that because we know what happened. But what did he know at the time? Was it reasonable, given everything that he knew about the surveillance, about the need to stay in touch with the team, about the dangerousness of this fentanyl dealer? All of that given, was it reasonable? It was a mistake of judgment. We know that. It was a tragedy that happened. But he made that reasonable decision in the context of law enforcement surveillance. While immunity is at the center of the case, appellate judges are only tasked with answering the question of whether the case should be removed from the state court into the federal court. Really, it's about the removal issue. What Should this case be in federal court? And I think the answer is it's going to be yes or no. And if the yeah. answer is no, then it gets kicked back to state court. If yeah. the answer is yes, it goes back to the federal district court. And then next, you would have to decide, okay, does the immunity defense right. apply? If the case remains in federal court, it doesn't mean that the immunity defense automatically works for Landis. His team will still have to show up, I'm sorry, will still have to show that running the stop sign was part of his work as a DEA agent. Either way, the victim's family will still be able to bring a civil lawsuit against Landis's employer, which in this case would be the United States of America. For now, the case is on pause while both sides wait for a decision from the Court of Appeals. Reporting in studio, Ezra Kaplan, Fox 12 Oregon. Okay, let's call it a day on the Bad Apple Report. It's a wrap for all these bad cops. Okay, let's get out there and have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this morning and every morning right here at Home on the Range. 7.30 a.m., bright and early. You guys are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much. Let's keep it going. See you tomorrow morning at 7.30 a.m. Have a great day. Three, two, one.